Okay, uh, what I've got here is a different version of the KSGER soldering station. This is a battery powered unit, which I'll go into more detail in another video. But the focus of this one is to just go through the menu, show you what version three of the uh, hardware and 3.02 of the software is. And already I can tell you I don't like it. I've already talked about uh, version 2.1 S. I think it is better than this uh, version three. Let me take you back. to what you're gonna see when you first turn it on. It does have a nice little graphic when you first power it up. I think that's a nice touch. Right now I've got it set to 50 degrees. This is just for demonstration purposes. It's got pretty much all of the same functionality. You press once. Let me hold everything steady here. You press once, you set the temperature, you know, wherever you want it. Press, it'll go to that temperature. One of the big problems I have with this particular unit is the, uh, the display right up here. It either shows 0% or 99%. I'll demonstrate, I'll uh, turn the temperature up and you'll see it goes to 99% as it's heating up. It does heat up really fast just like the other units from KSGER. But you see there's no indication as far as the uh, power level and uh, that's really annoying. I like to see the power level. I like to see how much power it's using. I don't care for this. Another problem is that there's no way for it to show you the tip that is currently set because you can calibrate each of your tips, uh, your, your heater elements or soldering tips. You can calibrate each one and you can go through the menu select and on 2.1S, it'll tell you right here in the bottom corner what tip you have. With this unit, it doesn't show that. You can still change it, of course, by pushing and turning. I've only got two units programmed in at the moment. But you can still choose. But it doesn't tell you right up on the front that... Uh, you know, which tip you're currently using. You have to go into the menu. So that's another thing I don't like. But uh, let's go into the menu. Okay, did you see that little glitch? Sometimes when I push the knob, it won't go automatically into the, uh, you know, whatever it's supposed to do, which is change temperature which is a, what happens with a quick press. It's kind of glitchy in that sometimes it'll just refresh the screen instead of actually go to the temperature. So that's a, a third thing I don't like about version 3. I talked to the manufacturer about it. They said that it's just a glitch. That's the way it is. You know, I, I think that's going to annoy me after a while. Well, all three of these problems are going to annoy me, which is why I'm sending this unit back. I'm going to uh, get it replaced with a version 2.1S. Anyway, let's go through the menu. It's very similar to my other videos of the 2.1S. You've got your standby. which is all the same. You can set it to uh, wake up by shake or by pushing the button. 
you can set the time, you know, one minute, I think up to, let's see. This is gonna be a long video, so yeah, 60 minutes. Actually, it shows zero. I haven't tried that. I don't think you'd want that. And then whatever temperature you want it to go to when it goes to standby, when you set it in your little stand and you're not moving the motion sensor, that's all fairly normal. Sleep, this is when it basically shuts the whole unit off, shuts power off to the whole unit. You know, if you're, you haven't used it, some people have a tendency to accidentally leave these turned on. Boost setup. Basically, how many, how, what, what is the temperature you want to boost it by? I set it to 40 degrees Celsius for one minute, which means if I just give this knob a, if I give the knob a quick flick to the right clockwise, it's basically going to boost itself by 40 degrees. And then after one minute, it's going to uh, drop back to the normal setting. Cold in adjust. This is basically, you can, it's, it's not quite clear, but the MCU, I think, is going to be the internal temperature. And you can have it read what the internal temperature is. And you can calibrate it by going, I've got it set at 22 degrees, because that's close enough. It's not that big a deal. NTS, I think that's going to be your, the uh, temperature of your hand unit. I'm not sure how it's going to get that temperature. But I think that's what it is. tip setup just like uh, the other videos you've got 90 different tips that you can choose from you know some of the more common K K tips KR KL your jails your DLs or D chisel bevels You've got all of those to choose from. And just like the other video, well, the other video showed an X, and when you click the button, it goes to a check mark. This one, they're all blank. But when you do select one, it puts a little star up there. So that's a small difference, but still works fine. Temp stepping. This is when you're adjusting your temperature in the process of soldering. You can go from one degree steps. In fact, let's go. One degree to 50 degree steps. I usually just leave it at 10. I think default is five but I don't need that level of precision. I just do steps of 10 degrees Celsius. You can set a password on it. You can set a screen saver to help protect the, uh, the display. If, you, if you're gonna be using it a whole lot, these displays can, you know, over, I don't know, months or years, you can get burn in so it does have a screensaver option. Power on state. This is when you first click the power switch in the back. You can have it immediately go to running mode, which is mean, means whatever temperature you had it set at initially, you know, 330 or, or whatever. It's just gonna immediately turn on and it's gonna go to that temperature. 
The sleep option means when you turn the power on, it will go to sleep mode, which means it's not going to send any power at all to the tip. It's just going to be like a standby sleep state until you push a button or uh, pick up the uh, soldering wand and give it a little shake. Usually you don't have to give it a shake. It'll, it'll sense motion. And then standby is the third option. So if you have it set to go to standby, like after one minute, and say you drop it down to 150 degrees, that's kind of like an idling state. It helps protect the tip, uh, keeps it from oxidizing, getting black all the time on you. It definitely makes your tips last longer. But yeah, standby mode, you can have it automatically go into standby mode so it's ready. Sleep, running, standby. I just leave it at running. I like it to power straight up when I hit the switch. Language, there's two options, English and I think Chinese of some type. But that is option number 10. If you get one, mine automatically came default English, so I didn't have to change anything. But if yours does come in an, the other language option, let's go down to menu 10. Assuming you ordered version 3.0. This is unique to 3.0 is option number 10. You can set date and time. I usually don't mess with this. It's not that big a deal. I don't need date and time. System Invo, that's what I started the video with. It shows you hardware, software version. Restore defaults, I think that makes it all the, all the uh, default settings go back to uh, factory. You know, if you were getting, uh, if you screwed it up, you screwed up some settings, it's acting weird, it's acting funny, the temperatures aren't right, you would use that to uh, set everything back to default. Buzzer setup, you have the buzzer on or off. Very nice feature, I usually just leave it on because it's not that annoying. Knob setup. This is interesting. You can make the knob go right now. It is set up where I turn it clockwise. It goes up the menu, but you can make it turn the opposite to where clockwise goes down. I'm really not sure what channel the channel option is let's go back okay I guess channel is what I normally have it set at voltage since this is a battery powered unit this is kind of an important thing but yeah, you can turn the voltage display on or off. And I'll show you where that goes. Down here in the uh, bottom right, you normally have the date and time. If you turn the voltage option on, it'll show you the, uh, the voltage going to this main, uh, what do you call it? The, the front end unit, the hardware software version. And you can have it show battery voltage if it's not plugged in or if it is plugged into the wall. It'll show, you know, the voltage coming from the power supply. I will get to that in more detail later. Oh great, my knob setup is backwards. Okay, fix that little problem. Low voltage. This is um, 
some optional stuff you can turn on if you want. You can set an alarm voltage or voltage alarm. If it gets down to 20.1 volt, it'll do an alarm sound, let you know that the batteries are low. And then at 19.5, you can basically have it turn off. And this is all fully adjustable. A lot of nice features in this. Temp adjust, this is where it goes through. You set it to the temp, the uh, tip, the heating element, like a, a DL52 chisel tip. And then boom, you go through the um, adjustment. It'll start off at 250 degrees. You set the offset. Then it'll go to 350 degrees. You set your offset you know, depending on how far off it is. And then the third setting is 430 degrees, which is a little lower than 2.1S. It set it at 450 degrees. But anyway, it's the same basic idea. I haven't actually adjusted any tips on this yet because this unit is going back. And then you have the exit. Okay, I think that covers pretty much everything in the menu. Normal operation, push it once, set your temperature. And unfortunately it doesn't give you an accurate power readout, just 99% or zero. I'm really not sure why it's showing 35. It shouldn't be that high. Show you the boost, I give it a quick flick clockwise okay you see it jumped 40 degrees and it'll time itself out after one minute because that's what I've got it set at or you could time it out just by pushing the button it'll drop back down you can go into standby mode by giving it a quick Rotation to the left. I'm going to wait till it drops down to normal. Okay. Standby. I've got that set at 100 degrees. Of course, you set it whatever you want. I'm going to pick up the wand. Yep. Automatically senses that, jumps back up to temperature. So functionally, this version 3.0, it works. It just doesn't work as well as version 2.1S, in my opinion. So it's really up to you. And I'm going to do a separate video on the unique features of this battery-powered unit. So that's it for now. Thanks.